when the moon orbits the Earth, when it's within 90% of its closest approach and it's also a full moon, that's what we call a supermoon. But this supermoon is the closest it's been since 1948. And so that means that it's actually going to be bigger and brighter than uh, ever before. And we're not going to have one this spectacular until 2034. So I'm hoping everyone gets a chance to go outside and take a look. Wow, 1948, so that goes back all the way to the Truman administration. Okay, so if it's something this special, clearly it's something we don't want to miss. What's the best place to see this? Well, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, mm -hmm. go outside after the sun goes down, and when the moon is up, then you're going to get the show. You're going to see a moon that's 14% bigger in the sky and 30% brighter. So it's really going to be amazing. You know, you know what's insane about this is this has been uh, one of our neighbors in space for years and years, yet there's so much about the moon that remains a mystery to us. I understand NASA has had a craft that's actually been orbiting the moon for the past seven years. What, what have we learned about the moon? Well, so you make a great point. It is our neighbor, and so it's a great place to study not only our close environment, but also the solar system as a whole. So we've had the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which has given us this amazing view, incredible detail. You know, we see these huge craters from uh, impacts on the moon, but what we've found from LRO is that the moon is changing far faster than we expected. So for example, the astronauts' footprints, we would expect them to be around for maybe millions of years, but because the surface is being changed so quickly by bombardments from space, it's probably only going to be tens of thousands of years. And that seems like a long time, but actually on these timescales, that's really, really short.